There aren't a lot of times in life where you can experience complete freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, freedom to be who you are, to do what you want, to do anything you want, uh, not get in trouble, uh, not, not hurt anybody. Right. And, and that kind of freedom, that ability to do everything and anything, is what I think was part of the whole magic of studio. Uh, and um, it's when people say to me today, well, you know, in the age of cell phones and other technological advances, you, you couldn't really repeat today what uh, happened 45 years ago. Right. Well, I don't agree with that. You right. know, I think that uh, we, what we did 45 years ago, you can do it again today because the same human condition exists today that was back then. Mm -hmm. And um, so we could have another Studio 54 now. <laughs> um, with a different name, I suppose. <laughs> right. um, but uh, it's just that was at the heart of why it captured everybody's imagination. And I, I other than, um, you know, maybe, uh, I mean, I know Steve and I, it's very hard for me to find someone that really gets what happened there. I know. And why it happened. You know, everybody has different versions, but, you know, that's what I think. And it, you think the same thing. And I, I, no, I completely agree with you. I mean, the fact is, is that, um, you know, with me living around the corner, so I'm there, uh, I'm one block away. Um, my experience was on such a, uh, I have to say, like an organic kind of level, because the studio was my local club right it's like you know somebody would say well um what's the place that you go to every night well i go to studio 54 every night and it's funny because we never called it studio 54 we used to just say studio we're just going to studio matter of fact there's a funny story where um i think it's either um uh john taylor from duran duran um um yeah, I think it is. He says that um, we're going to studio, and he thought I meant to the recording studio. <laughs> I took a story. <laughs> I brought him to Studio 54, and he was like, whoa, wait a minute, I thought we were going to the recording studio. I was like, uh, well, we can do that too, but we'll do that later. Um, and it was just, it, it was, man, it was like my local hangout, all of my best friends. I was explaining um uh that that earlier when i was doing um uh the studio 54 radio show that um i even have a statue in my backyard done by scotty <laughs> and and um it's like scotty um, unbelievable like i i could think of so many of my friends that unfortunately that are not around anymore but just so many wonderful nights so many just so many great things that happen as a result of meeting someone um on a particular night going out to uh we had that it was that chinese restaurant that was weird that was like a a few blocks up on broadway that i met um um uh dude looks like a lady um <laughs> steve tyler for the first time it was just we were in the right part of town it was interesting that hell's kitchen became like so we had the theater district downtown but just that whole bit just right above the theater district became like the club district it was it, it was happening man it was like so different today, uh, the West Side, when it was then. It was, it was awesome. Uh, New York is so different today. Um, I know. Very bohemian. Right. Uh, very creative. Uh, it, it really was, uh, you know, it wasn't dominated only by hedge fund guys and right. things like that. Right. And it was uh, this kind of mixture. Um, uh, the, the the gay movement finally gaining steam and 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 
those guys were really the creative force in New York City at the time in just about every industry. And so you had all that going on, uh, and uh, it was just um, a unique time. And I know people, my parents used to say, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald said New York was over in the 20s. Uh, my parents used to say <laughs> New York was over in the 50s. Right. Uh, but uh, the 70s, I think, were, were the, the last time there was this incredible diversity uh, in this city and this energy. Anything could happen. Uh, you can, you know, reach the highest of highs. Uh, all different kinds of people. The country kind of tilted over and everybody rolled into New York because it was really the land of opportunity. And... Um, it's not like that anymore. I know. It, it's interesting because I would think having lived through it, I would think that that's what people would, would want again, that you would gravitate towards a society that feels like that. Because what was it? We, it, was a, it was a society that was loaded with hope. We were really hopeful. We really believed in accomplishment. I mean, think about, so my generation, we felt like we actually really did end the war. <laughs> and it was a big deal. Yeah. Like to be a New Yorker and be afraid of being drafted and things like that and, uh, and being a sort of anti-war kid and then having the war come to an end, the, celebra the celebration that happened as a result of the war ending happened to be, um, it, it felt like there was this sort of wonderful vortex that just sort of, it was like the women's movement, the, the gay rights movement, the anti-war movement, all of those type of things just happened like at the same time. It felt like, okay, let's all party together. <laughs> let's, and I remember, you know, the concept of, of unionism and I know like this is so weird now in in America because people think that uh you know you know unions are you know anti-business it's like but the concept of um feeling like I will fight for your cause was a cool thing to me when I was younger you know like you don't break the picket line and things like that and and whether you believed in that particular cause you believed in the spirit of the cause you believed in the spirit of you know what we're all Americans we're all workers we're all trying to to better our lives I want your life to be better as well as I want mine to be better I don't want mine to be better at the cost of yours not being better. It's like, I want you to do well and I want me to do well. And let's all have a good time doing well. <laughs> I remember the first time I, um, I, I met someone who was uh, extremely wealthy, certainly by my standards. Um, and he said, you know, my favorite thing is people who do well that do good. And I didn't, I had never heard that phrase before. And I started to meet philanthropists and people who had done very well in life and then wanted to spread it around. I was like going, man, I hope one day I could be a person who does well and can then do good. And Studio 54 had that vibe, man. It was like, psh, it felt like there was a preponderance of people who had good hearts and good intentions and good thoughts and we were creative and we marched to our own beat and the beats were pretty good actually um well i think you've made such a major contribution to humanity um well, doesn't have to that contribution isn't only measured in, in philanthropy i mean i think what you've done has been philanthropic improve people's lives by what you do. And I think um, the consummate gentleman you are in general, a good guy in your thoughts, I have nothing but the highest respect and admiration uh -huh. for you now. I really, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I think you're Thank a special you. guy.